As far as I remember, I always loved cars. I can't remember when I got into them, but I can remember the first car I ever took apart. It was with my friend Nathan Steinke. We were freshmen in high school, and he had this like old 1983 Corolla wagon. My dad, in his Mini Cooper S, I used to sit on his lap, and I couldn't reach the pedals, but I could do the steering wheel. Just as a child, playing with my cars, aligning the cars, and just to look at them, it was like good memories. We are all car lovers uh, in the studio. Everybody likes cars. Let's have some fun. I don't know when I started liking cars. I think I just always have. I always had Hot Wheels and remote control cars. My dad always had old BMWs. Ever since cars first kind of ran, then this humans have been fascinated by. Since my childhood, it's always strong memories uh, with my family, with my uh, brother, my uh, father, going to see uh, Formula One and, uh, and MotoGP. Robert. Or just having the opportunity to, to look and to go into a very beautiful car because my, my father is a, a car addict, I would say. My dad was a huge amateur car enthusiast, so he had a succession of Mini Cooper S's and Lotus Lands and so forth, and he used to tinker around with them. He bought the Lotus Lands, they came in kits, a kind of great time helping him and putting the car together from a very young age really from sony by the time i was 10 or 11 then he wants to be a a uh, designer in in race of racing cars and as you he said i'm going to take that what else that happened in your day but i wanted to have my first so you know what what else that i wanted to have my session in my head my dad says that uh him having a fast car saved my life when I was a kid, uh, taking me to the hospital. And he said, like my mom said that like, the tires never touched the road. So in more than one way, I think I owe cars my life. This is the latest Nissan GTR. This is the first Nissan GTR. And this is every Nissan GTR in between. Today, we are doing the coolest thing that I think we've ever done, or at least one of them. We have every single Nissan GTR, all eight generations in one place. We're at the legendary Willow Springs racetrack. It's really the first car that a lot of my friends and peers remember uh, getting really, really excited about. You know, we saw it in a video game. And it turns out that there's like a bunch of them and uh, a really strong community here in Southern California. And we were able to, you know, pull a lot of strings and get them all here um, to sort of tell the history. This is the best day. This is the best day. Right. They're a little tight. These are very small seats. Okay. All right, let's go. Don't wreck. <laughs> で、まあ、僕らはあくまでも行動を走るための笠前さだから、その who embodies car culture? You know, essentially, that's the question we are trying to answer. And there's no exhaustive answer uh, to that. I'd say right now I would define car culture as very diverse. There's something for everybody. Ultimately, it also has to make sense creatively. So it's a fine balance, taking into account very different factors, starting with uh, you know, the, the player interest. 
When we uh, wanted to deliver the experience for the Cremator Fest, uh, we designed since the beginning uh, something we call the playlists. And the playlist it's a story around a, a car culture experience. And we wanted to play with all the ingredients we have in the game to craft something very unique uh, around a brand, a model, a star, a car customizer. Imano Motorsports, I think, has been a passion where you're, you're combining engineering and driving into, into one area. And I think that's what makes Formula One in particular, motor racing in general, but in particular Formula One, unique in the world of sport, that it is man and machine. For me, car culture is an umbrella word that we use to encompass very uh, different uh, feelings and ways of uh, considering the cars. And I think that's perhaps what makes it so fascinating that it can be everything from taking pride from washing your car on a Sunday morning to taking it to the pub on a nice sunny day or going for a lovely drive through the woods or whatever it might be, or wooded lane I should say. And we all have something to tell from a design perspective for all the dream uh, that can uh, bring. When I was a kid, I would get magazines and I would have like four cars a month to look at. And like now, like you can just go to YouTube or like anywhere else on the internet and see whatever you want to see. You know, they're like muscle cars, like Japanese imports, European cars, tiny little Japanese K cars with like little tiny wheels that are like slammed, like big trucks. Like you can be into and find other people that are into whatever you like. So the definition of car culture is it's diverse, it's universal, and it could be thousands of stories uh, and personal stories for each one. <laughs>